over the next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at gait, some of the mechanics of walking, some of the anatomy of walking. We'll be looking also at the uh, aerobic versus anaerobic energy sources, fast twitch versus slow twitch fibers, some of the anatomy and physiology of walking. Gait, we'll look at how you land, the cycle of, physical cycle of walking, stance versus swing phase. Now walkers tend to speak of gait. More often you'll hear runners speak of stride, as in stride length, how far apart each footfall is. And for runners who are doing distance running, a shorter side strength is side, a shorter side stride length is preferable. Longer stride lengths tend to lead to injury. And that's true for walking too. In general, you want your cadence. What's up, Tom? Not hey, much. What's up? Nothing happening. The uh, you want your cadence, that's the rate at which your feet turn over your cycles per second of your feet. You want your cadence to be high and your stride length to be short. This actually reduces injuries, but it can lead to flexibility problems. We'll look at flexibility in a couple weeks as a topic uh, and come back to it later in the course. But from gait and looking at how you walk, we'll also look at your foot strike. Do you land on your heel or your toe? You know, this is something that's kind of built into the way you are, so it may be hard to control. But, uh, for example, I'm a heel striker. As a runner, I land on my heel. But I work hard to try to shift over and land midfoot. I can't quite land on my toe. But it is thought to be helpful to get forward from your heel on your landing. And so we worry about things like foot strike angle. A high angle is bad, and this is true for walkers too. So you'll learn that it stresses your knees to have a high angle. And from there we'll look at aerobic and anaerobic exercise. Distance running is aerobic. Involves slow twitch muscle fibers, you'll learn about those. Sprinters use fast twitch fibers when they are running. Uh, and so you'll learn about anaerobic and aerobic and the energy sources for those. You can't go very far on the anaerobic glycolysis system. My distance running is built on top of a the Krebs cycle and electron transport, and you'll encounter some of that. Now, this shift from anaerobic to aerobic can be moved. <coughs> and over the years, <coughs> pardon me, my ability to <coughs> remain aerobic has increased. So, you'll learn about these things and more in the next couple of weeks in the videos posted. Get out there and put in those miles, a mile a day, walking in a safe place. Have a good walk.